Hi Best Buds, it's Kathy with Kathy's Garden. I'm so happy that you've joined me today. Today we're going to make a nested file folder insert for our junk journal. But first let's have our shout out to Jojo, Deli, Elizabeth, Levin, Connie, Harmony's Creations, Claire, and Tracker. I appreciate each and every one of you. I am using papers out of this beautiful book right here. The Country Diary of Book, Flowers Drawing, Preserving, and Potpourri, Oppressing, and Potpourri by Carol Pet Petlin and with photographs by Simon McBride. Oh my goodness, you guys, it is really pretty. I struggled with using this book, but it was like, Kathy, come on now, what are we saving it for? Um, so I just started using it. I love it. The pages aren't too awful shiny. It is an older book I bought at the um, bookstore that we have, the used bookstore. So there you go. I have no idea if it's still available, but there, I've showed the cover so you know what I'm talking about. Now I have prepped quite a bit for this project so that we can move it right along. So let me get my things out here. Now let me show you these pages. Let's get to the pages. Here we are. Here are the pages that we're going to be using. Isn't this one pretty? Oh, that's not all the pages. Here they are. Oh, I see what I've done. Okay, I've separated them. That's why. All right, you're going to need three pages. Whether you're going to use book page, uh, larger book pages like this, well, you're going to need the larger book pages all the way around unless you downsize it and then you would have to do like you do a recipe <laughs> and, and downsize it if you want a smaller one but this one right here is 10 inches by 8 inches it looks just like that the next size is this one right here it's 8 inches by 8 inches it looks like that and the next size is a six inch by eight inch and of course you see I had to cut my papers to make them this size but this is how we're getting a nested file folder so what I want to do is I want to take this and I want this to be um, I want to fold it like this I do believe so let's go ahead and I'm just thinking right here just yeah thinking just a minute. I guess we'll be doing it this way. Yeah, we need to fold it this way because my book opens this way. So that's why I need to fold it this way. And let's just get that done. So we're folding it in half, creasing it. Give it a good crease. Get the next size and we're going to fold it. I'm going to fold it like this. So folding it just like this in half, giving a good crease. And then this one right here, and I'm going to fold it in half. Okay, got that all taken care of. Now, they're going to be placed together like this. The biggest one on the bottom, then the next size, and then the next size. I did that wrong, you guys. This was supposed to be folded this way. Ooh. I have to fold it the long way. Sorry, guys. I was not paying attention. Because they all have to be the same length across. Okay? So there we are. Now, do I want to maybe change this up and maybe have it be like this? Because maybe I think that looks better. Do I like that better? Do I want this? So you can play with your papers and just see how you want it. No, I think I like it this size showing. And it doesn't really matter on this one. Because we can decorate it up. We can de decorate it all kinds of ways. I'm just checking to see which way I like it. I don't want both of those. Okay, I've, I've played around enough. This is how I'm going to have it. So as you can see, they're nested sizes. Then what I've done is I've brought in some coffee dyed paper and some coffee dyed tracing paper. I 
have two, like I have one coffee dyed paper and one tracing paper for each size. So this is the small size right here, so I have two. And then this is the next size, and I have two. And then the larger size, and I have two, two pieces. Now that's just what I've chosen. Maybe you want to have two coffee dyed papers. Maybe you want to have some coffee dyed lined book page. Whatever it is that you choose will be perfect. So we need to fold these the same way. So I've got to pay attention this time in my folding. They all need to be the same length. So we're going to fold this up just like this. So that's going to fit right here, inside here. And then I'm going to fold this one just like this. Keep a good crease. And I want my tracing paper to be first. All right, so there's that. Now I have one that I've completed. I've totally decorated it. Decorating will take you just a little bit of time, depending on how much you want to decorate, how, how intricate you want your decorations to be, whether you want pockets, tucks, uh, that type of thing. So I have totally decorated one, and I just love how it turned out. It's so much fun to make. It's not difficult at all. And it would be a great item to have for an add-on on a journal or even a standalone. It's that pretty when you get finished with it. It really is that pretty. So here's this the one that I messed up on. I need to make sure I fold it the long way. Just like this, the long way. Put that right on in there, just like that. And then the long way. And I want that to be first, I want that to be second, I want it to be just like this. And then this one fits just like this. So either we can have it with all those together, or I could maybe do it like this, and I think I like it this way better. So we've got our smallest, which was 6 by 8 inches. We folded it, we've got two pieces that we folded that were also the same size, six inches by eight inches. Our next size was eight inches by eight inches. We've got our pretty paper that we got out of our book, and we've got our two pieces that we can uh, journal on. Then I've got my larger one, which is 10 inches by eight inches, and I've got my two pieces of journaling paper there. So there you have it, that's how you combine it. <clears throat> and then, of course, we're going to go ahead and we're going to sew these together. So I'm just grabbing my paper clips and I'm just securing my pages in the order that I want them to be in. We just checked that. It's looking good to me. Now, you know that I always make myself a little cheat sheet. And I just get a scrap piece of paper and just cut... I don't know, about an inch. That don't actually looks like an inch and a half. But an inch, inch and a half, something like that. And it needs to be as long as the item that you want to stitch together. So I'm marking it right there because it's the end of the book. Just bringing in my scissors and I'm just going to give it a cut. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to fold it the long way. So folding it the long way. Just like this, give it a crease. Okay, then I'm going to take these two pieces right here and I'm going to fold them again, just like that, and giving it a crease. Then I'm going to take these two ends, I'm going to fold it one more time and give it a nice crease. I'm going to open it up and right where our creases have intersected, I'm going to put a dot. So just where the folds intersect, I put a dot. Now I take my paper and I place it right inside of my signature. I'm looking for another paper clip. Oh, threw one on the floor there. I have to get that later. And 
a tight paper clip and get them in there. Just, it's just to secure it. Now, I'm going to make sure it's down inside, really inside there. I'm going to take my needle and my thread. Now, I like to use, um, I used to use embroidery thread, but I kind of switched to book binding thread, which is waxed. And so I've been sticking with that because I really like it. And I take my thread and I say one, two, three. I'm measuring. And then I'm just going to give it a cut. I'm not putting any type of tassels on here. I'm just going to tie it. So I've got my needle all ready to go. And then I'm going to bring in a little piece of packing material. And I'm going to hold my booklet closed as much as possible. I'm going to bring in my awl, aka pokey tool. And I'm going to stick it in, in the one of the holes. It doesn't matter which one you start with. But you want to try very hard. <laughs> it's important to hold your awl straight up and down. You don't want to turn it. You don't want to have it at an angle. Straight up and down. And it really helps if you pull your papers together as you do so. So straight up and down. I'm putting the point right on one of the dots in my measuring. And I'm poking it through. As you can see, it has come through right here. It's come through. Alrighty. Now I'm going to do the other two. Holding it straight up and down. Having it come through and straight up and down and having it come through. Now we need to remove this right here, but don't remove your other ones. Keep it all together. Get your needle that you have your thread on, whatever your thread you've chosen. Go in the center. Go down into the center hole from the top. Pull it through. Hold yourself a little piece right here. Hang on to it with your finger, the tail, Go back through one of the other holes. It does not matter which one you go through. And pull it through. Check to make sure that there is nothing that the thread is caught on. Go all the way down to the other end. Put it through and pull it. Look to make sure it's not caught on anything. And it is not. Now you're going to see that the tail that you've been hanging on to it's going to either be on this side or this side of the center thread. When you take your needle and you go back and you're going to go right back in the center hole, pop it through, you want your needle to come on the opposite side of where your tail was. So my tail is here. I'm going to pull it through and now my tail is on the other side. So I have two on either side of my center thread. Now I'm going to pull this through. There we go. And I'm going to check to make sure that it's all intact, and it is. And I'm going to pull it tightly, but not so tight that it'll rip a hole. And I'm going to tie a knot, just like that. Now, if you're working with embroidery thread, I suggest that you put a little dot of glue and leave your book open while it dries. But since I'm using the book binding thread, it is a little bit waxed, and so it holds a knot very well. So we're all together. Now let's open this up, just like this. Get it all back open, and I'm going to show you another thing that I did with, with my little booklet. I picked some type of paper. Now, in my example, I use different papers, but I kind of thought that this would be pretty if I used this paper for all of it. And what I mean is I've got my tab punch here, and I'm going to punch out some pieces for tabs. And I'm going to punch out six. So there's one. I've got to make a clean cut. And here's two. Okay, there's two, there's three, there's three, there's four, okay, 
Here's five. Whoopsie. Five. And here's six. There we go. Now, what I want to do with my tabs is I would like to actually, I'm going to actually uh, ink this up a little bit. I didn't ink my paper, so maybe I won't. In my example, I did ink around my, my, my main papers, the ones that came out of my book. This one I did not do, so let's just don't do that then. So I'm going to take my tabs and all oh, my three little nested file folders. We're going to make them into what I would think a file folder would have, and they would have these little tabs. So I'm just going to maybe make it something like, how do I want it? Because I don't want to cover up my pretty little flowers. Maybe something like this. Okay. Oh, I can't get used to it not being inked. You know, I think I have to ink it, guys. <laughs> I just have to. And I'll have to go back and ink my papers, which I can do that. That's not a problem. I can do that. So I just have to ink it, guys. So sorry, but it's just something that I've come to, to really, I don't know, like. I've come attached to my inking. So let's see. A little bit of glue. And I'm going to put this one right here. And I don't want to glue my papers together, so making sure that that glue does not seep and that it gets placed right there. Uh oh, did I lose one? I don't know what happened to that other one. Alrighty, so you probably don't need to see me doing all this inking. Let's just put down this one. I think I'd like to place it right here. Right, and then just quickly run my little ink sponge on here. And let's do this one, and I think I'd like it right down there. I'm also going to take my other three little tabs, and I'm going to place them right here on this part as well on these three. So I'm not going to do that right now, but I was just showing you that this is where I would place them right here on that side as well. Let me go ahead and bring in one that I've completed and you'll get the idea of how it looks when it's all finished. It is really quite beautiful. Now I can't decide if I want the silk, the silk flower do I want a little bit, like, do I want them right here? Do I want to put a silk flower right down there? I can't decide. I still can't decide. You guys in the comment section, tell me if you think that would look pretty if I put it down there. Otherwise, it's going to look like this. I kind of like it, though. I've got bling here. I've got my sari. This is, this green, is the most beautiful color sari I have ever seen. Now, over at Crimson Heart Studios, Cindy has gotten in some new Sari Silk, and I have used it here. It is absolutely stunning. So if you're looking for some new colors, some rich colors for fall, this green is like breathtaking, then pop on over there. I will put her um, information down below. So this is how this one looks that I made. Let's open it up and let's see how it looks inside. So I put a sunflower fussy cut here and the label and then that's just how beautiful the page was and my little tab, my bling and my sorry ruffle and some more bling. Open it up. I just put a little fussy cut there with some lace. And those are my two journaling papers. And then here I did some more fussy cutting and another label. And then, of course, this beautiful yellow sari with some bling and my tab. Open it up on this page. I actually put a little fussy cut, a label, a postcard, and a pocket. And I added some of that sari onto a tag that is from 
chapter one papers and I do believe the postcard is from digitalcollage.com and then I have my two papers isn't that a beautiful picture and it's just a fussy coat with some lace and a, a label I've got that gorgeous gorgeous green sorry some bling in my tab over here I decided to make a little type of um, belly band pocket slash pocket with this beautiful fussy cut from my porch prints and some pattern paper that I made into a ruffle and a little label there and then two journaling cards from chapter one papers then I've got my two journaling pages and then there's the center and then the two more and then over here I took a little tag and I made a side pocket with some more of those postcards they were just the right size to stick in there I've got another fussy cut I think this is from my porch prints too this these labels are from by J. Lee Lou and I've got a little bit of lace here another little tab and then over here isn't that pretty? I've got a fussy cut and some more lace and another tab. A tag, I should say that's not a tab, it's a tag. And then here I just put a little tiny envelope pocket with a little tiny piece of ephemera. A fussy cut, a label, some lace, and another tab. Over here I made a pocket with a butterfly and a label and then in the pocket I just have a scrap piece of coffee dyed paper that I just slipped in here that you could journal on and then we've got our two pieces <clears throat> of journaling paper and then here isn't that a beautiful page I just put a fussy cut and some lace with my tab and then you can see my tabs on this side as well I love this project absolutely love it so I hope that you have enjoyed it as well. And if you have, please give me a thumbs up. I invite you to subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you in my next video. I'll see you there, guys. Bye now.